watching Work Life with Samantha and Cara. In a reminder of our top story, Brazil's environment minister is to meet top officials from the Amazon today to discuss tactics to counter deforestation in the world's biggest rainforest. Plenty more on that throughout the day. Now, walk into most stores on your high street and the chances are that you will hear some kind of music being played in the background. But the music industry says that this is costing artists around $2.6 billion a year. And that's because it says most businesses are not aware that they're required to pay special royalty fees. Now, this is a growing problem with more than 21 million businesses falling foul of this last year alone. Well, our next guest, Ryan Edwards, says he has a solution to this problem. His company, Audu, has come up with technology that monitors music played in commercial spaces and ensures artists are paid accurately. Welcome to you. Thanks very much for being with us. Now, this was sparked actually by your career as a musician, wasn't it? Correct. And you had quite a successful uh, early career. And then further down the line, you heard one of your songs being played in a store, didn't you? Tell us a story about Absolutely. how this started. Yeah, so um, so I actually had a top 10 single uh, in my late teens. And a few years ago, I was walking through one of the very popular department stores on uh, on Oxford Street and, uh, and heard my song playing. And I'll never forget, because of course my wife joked, was clearly looking at a very expensive handbag that day and said, how much are you getting paid? And I said, oh, it's a few pence, don't worry. And a few months later, of course, I was never paid for that, that broadcast. And it got me thinking, and my professional career has been in digital and data products. And actually, when I did some research, I found that it's very hard for these amazing royalty organisations to collect billions of pounds and dollars per year to actually know what's being played in the real world, track it, and then pay out accurately. Right. So just describe the difference in what, how it was being done yep. when you went through that store looking at handbags and then <laughs> found you didn't get a single penny for hearing your track, and how your company does it. Of course. So so traditionally, that what they've done is they've worked with with different sets of sample data, so radio play or what's been purchased, and even people taking a manual audit literally stood there with a the clipboard trying to understand what's going on. What we've done is we've flipped it into a digital product, and we call it an audio meter. So um, think very much like a, a small kind of Alexa or Siri type of device, and it gets installed into the premises, and it just monitors and captures the music that's played. Of course, we know exactly what's been played in real time, what's happened, and we report that back to the royalty societies around the world for fair and accurate distribution. And how would you get companies to employ this technology? They'll have to pay for it, presumably? No, so, so the great thing is our, our customer really is the royalty society, so the guys that collect all the money. Uh, they then license all the premises. So, so the way that we see it is it's a value-added service. So they effectively will pay us so we can run our technology and our business, and they will pass it on to the, to the licensee, so retailers, gyms, pubs, clubs, all the different places that broadcast music. I suppose there's this, this preconception that... Uh, all you artists are multi-millionaires and you won't miss a few pence here and there. Maybe, I mean, just describe what it's like to be a musician generally, yeah. the majority of people who are depending on these fees. It's true, and I think we, you know, we all read, you know, particularly how well Ed Sheeran is doing, you know, top grossing tour of all time very recently. And actually, when you look at music and, and the way that music um, payments are distributed, you know, only 1% pick up around about 80% of the money that's out there. You know, it's very hard to make a living from touring to sales. We know streaming services have, have changed the, the mechanics and the way that people earn as well. So, um, so from our side, this is really about fairness and accuracy. That's been the challenge historically. You know, if you've been very popular on radio, it's a very, very well trackable means of, of broadcast. Therefore, it's been easy to pay out on those um, on those plays. Where now, actually, we're trying to bring kind of real world data into into the industry. Just briefly, have you seen any pennies roll in yet from the use of your technology? <laughs> so not you not yet. Not so, uh, <laughs> no, I keep joking. I think I think my mum still is playing playing my track on repeat. Oh, but uh, it's all but about no. the hand. Back, it's got it? that. It's it really is. Yeah, still waiting. She is, definitely. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I'll be back when she gets a handbag. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Good to have you in. Thank you.